Imagine waking up one morning, perfectly fine, and then a couple of hours later losing feeling in all of your limbs. Spinal cord injuries are very common yet tragic. Many of you probably know or have heard of someone with a spinal cord injury and as a result has become paralyzed. Along with my personal experience with this topic, I have done additional research for the purpose of this speech. Today, I would like to inform you all about why I chose this topic, what this injury specifically is, and the causes and effects of it. To begin with, I want to give you an inside look on my personal experience with this topic. My inner connection started the day that my uncle George lost feelings in all of his limbs. He had to go to the doctor and they said that the most likely cause of this is because he just has a pinched nerve, but it was actually a lesion that was rubbing against his spinal cord, causing bleeding. Therefore, he had to undergo surgery and, was, and that resulted in him becoming paralyzed from his neck down. After going through months of rehabilitation, George can barely lift his arms, his shoulders, and has slight movement in his fingers and his hands. At the time of his injury, he was only 30 years young, married to my aunt Connie for two years, and just eight months prior, him and Connie had twin baby girls. Now that I have told you my story, I hope you have some sort of an idea of what spinal cord injury is, but now I would just like to go into more depth about what it is specifically. In black and white, spinal cord injury is essentially damage to the spinal cord. Once the spinal cord is cut and damaged, one loses feelings in their limbs. Mostly it's just your legs unless the injury occurs upper in, in the upper portion of the spinal cord. According to Dr. Jason C. Eck from MedicineNet.com, he says that you should keep in mind two specific terms. In my Uncle George's case, he has quadriplegia, which is paralysis of both the arms and the legs. This occurs when the spinal cord is affected in the upper portion of the cord. The other term is paraplegia, when the spinal cord is, is affected in the lower area, it just causes paralysis of your legs. Now that you know what it specifically is, it is necessary for me to go into the causes and effects of spinal cord injury. On the spinal cord injury article on mayoclinic.org, they state that this injury is mostly caused by accidents, diseases, or disorders such as osteoporosis. Families are not just impacted emotionally, but also financially. The patient has to undergo several months or years of rehabilitation in order to get back to, to where they need to be. And it, it is also extremely hard to get back to working, especially if it's a more physically demanding career, and they are also required extra caregivers at home. For example, George needs extra help with toileting, bathing, and being fed. His wife Connie pretty much has to take care of him the same way he she takes care of his, his twin girls. His family had to purchase a lift to lift him from his bed to his wheelchair. They had to make their house handicapped accessible and he overall needs around the clock care at home. In summary, spinal cord injury is life changing. From walking around and being bound to a wheelchair from walking around and being active to being bound to a wheelchair, people with spinal cord injury definitely have to adjust. They can fortunately think and communicate and live full lives. But as Brain and SpinalCord.org says, there are two phases of this, acute and rehabilitation. Acute is right after injury and rehabilitation is working your way to become more independent. George is able to to now go and parent his children successfully and with the help of his special computer, he is able to go back to his engineering job. Thank you.